combination. Look at that damn poster. It's gorgeous. So Birth of a Nation is the first film directed by actor Nate Parker, and it follows the story of a preacher slash slave named Nat Turner, played by Nate Parker. Nat has raised his whole life on a plantation farm, but along the way he picks up a book, the Holy Bible, and begins reading the scripture. The words inspire Nat, and thus so begins preaching to his own kind. Nat's owner, Samuel Turner, played by Army Hammer, gets an offer that he should use his slave to go to other plantations and use his strong words to calm down slaves that are being aggravated or trying to rebel. Nat obviously has no no choice in the matter decides to go along with it only because he will be spreading the good word of the Bible. However, on his journey from plantation to plantation, he sees a lot of things he doesn't agree with and that really riles him up into forming a rebellion to help his own kind become free. And that's all I'll pretty much say without giving any spoilers to you guys. This is a spoiler free review. I'm just going to tell you what I liked about the film, what I didn't like, hit you with a rating system just like this one, let you know if it's worth checking out, renting, or maybe just avoiding the film completely. And there are a few interesting things about this film from the beginning. It premiered earlier in the year at Sundance Film Festival. It was highly praised. Both critics and audiences really were drawn to the movie, and so were the studios. This led to Birth of a Nation having the highest bid made at Sundance Film Festival, rounding out at $17.5 million. And in fact, Netflix was wanting to pay them more to have it stream exclusively on their service. But for fear that it would come out on the Netflix platform, it would deter the Academy and not get an Oscar nomination. So they decided to go with Fox instead. However, that is the least of your worries for this film. And what I mean by that, there is a little bit of controversy within this film. I do not want to go into it or have to explain it in this review because I do not believe that the choices some people make should affect the quality of a film. I know some people might not agree with that, but if you want to find out the controversy going on in the film, I'm sure you can Google it and find out the information for yourself. For me, I'm not going to let that deter my enjoyment of this film. Even though I know the controversy surrounding the film, I'm really just going to judge it based on its merits and what was presented to me. So with that said, let me tell you about some of the positives of the film. Definitely, I think, one of the best films of the year so far. I could definitely see why this film was so highly bid and why studios wanted it in their corner for Oscar season. Because Nate Parker delivered an amazing performance throughout this film. I never for once doubted the acting ability of Nate Parker in this film. He really brings Nate Turner to life and you get to understand this character and really like him. But I mean, it wasn't just Nate Parker. Jackie O'Haley, he played one of the most menacing white people in this film and he was really an asshole. But that's basically what you get in these slave type films. There's very few likable white people in these films. But for a few moments in the film, Army Hammer's character is likable at times, but you know he's got to turn bad eventually. And I like that about this film. This film is all about the characters changing. Army Hammer's character goes from likable to a complete asshole. Nate Parker's character goes from a complete innocent preacher to a badass. There's really no bad acting throughout this whole film. I can definitely guarantee Nate Parker will most likely get an Oscar nomination for this film. But it wasn't just the acting. One of the biggest positives this film has is its imagery. There is some beautiful imagery going on in this film that is either brutal, inspiring, or just shocking. And that's a really big compliment I can give because films involving slavery happen every year and a half. And when a film like this starts to happen every year and a half, you notice a couple of trends. And even though there are a few of those trends in this film, they do it in such a fresh and revealing way that you're interested throughout the whole time. Another positive for the film is the way they handle the time shifts. Because this film really is captivating about 80% of Nate Turner's life. And it's kind of hard to fit a whole life within a two hour span movie. It was a smooth transition all the way and you really understand how this guy went from innocent preacher to brutal killer. And on the subject of him going through that change, the film has a lot of bad things happen to this character in the film. And you would think when one bad thing happens after another after another, you would get oversaturated, almost feel like, well, this is just a story about a guy who has a terrible life. No, they make you feel for this guy. They make you feel upset that this is happening to him. You almost want to get up and punch the people that are hurting this character. I highly recommend it. Anybody out there who's a movie buff that enjoys a film that's critic worthy. Not only that, but you can feel Nate Parker's passion in this film. You can tell he's really giving it all in this film. And I hope he gets some sort of recognition despite whatever controversy is going on with him right now. If I had to give a few dislikes for the film, I would say that even though I really enjoyed it being a character study on Nate Turner, don't expect the film to be anything about the Antebellum South battle. Because honestly, when that happens in the film, it's cut very fast and you don't get enough of it. They gloss over a few details and they just go straight through it. So don't expect a history lesson. Expect more of a character study and understanding why this person did what they did. Also, there are a few dream sequences. And for me personally, I don't always like dream sequences within a film. And I know there's people out there who agree with me that dream sequences sometimes takes them out of the film. And I know they're metaphors and they're 
they're supposed to mean something, but for me they just didn't work. But just for warning anybody who's like me that doesn't enjoy dream sequences within a film, they're in there, but they're not that bad. But anyways guys, that's just my opinion on Birth of a Nation. If you got around to see it, let me know what you thought about the film. Also, if you know the controversy going on with the film, tell me, do you think this hurts its chances at the Academy? But as always guys, I'm Chris, and I leave you with the 3C Film Review. Take care.